Oh yeah, he's got some weight to him. Love my job, guys. There's salmon all over the bottom. They're starting to bite, and we're going to smack them today. Not as small as they look. <laughs> White Dodger today, guys. White Dodger, shad tube, same setup. Lead core, 20 ish feet, I would say. But they're starting to move up early today, and we're going to smack them all. all Probably what, about 10 30? Something like that, yeah. Oh, wow. These fish are actively feeding, guys. Pond smelt, right there. That pond smelt. He's in perfect condition, except for the fact that he's dead because that salmon just ate him. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I'm standing out in my back deck here in the Sierra foothills and uh, weather-wise, can't seem to make up its mind. Um, we've had big wind, big rain, we've had a little snow this morning and we've also had some sunshine this morning. So, got my fingers crossed. Um, I'm hoping over the course of the next week, we start to see that transition into spring conditions because we've got a lot of snow got a lot of water and uh, frankly I'm ready not to be rained on I want to get out and catch some trout in my cargo shorts I'm really looking forward to that um, it's gonna be a great time this spring wherever you're trout fishing I'm gonna be at Collins Lake and a bunch of other places but uh, it's gonna be a great time but I'm not here to talk about trout today um, I just wrapped up my winter season out at uh, Folsom Lake chasing landlocked kings and i'm going to talk about landlocked kings in this video i am going to give you a thumbnail sketch of being a successful landlocked king angler at Folsom and anywhere else landlocked kings swim okay now before i do that and i i don't generally kind of toot my own horn on this channel um kings are a fish landlocked kings even ocean kings they're a fish that some people struggle with catching. And then you have some other people who have had a measure of success. Maybe they've had a measure of success at a single body of water, be it Folsom or Shasta or wherever. And, and they've caught a few good fish and, and therefore they, they feel compelled to, to climb up on an apple box, um, stroke their own ego, and uh, expound on their own expertise and and they put out the idea that you know if you don't follow their philosophy um you're not a very good fisherman you're a novice or, or whatever so let me give you a little bit of, about my king salmon resume across the board okay i've caught landlocked king salmon in most california reservoirs where they exist um, I've caught king salmon in pretty much every major North American river, um, starting at the Kenai in Alaska, the Columbian, the Sac, the Feather, um, Umpqua, Rogue, um, and the list goes on and on. So definitely caught my share of kings in rivers. Um, I fish for kings in the ocean from the Gulf of Alaska all the way down to Santa Cruz and a lot of places in between. Um, my personal biggest king salmon, 71 pounds, 71, 71 pounds on the Kenai River in Alaska. Um, I've caught multiple kings over 40 pounds. My biggest ocean king, 33 pounds, caught that when I was 16 years old. Yes, I've been salmon fishing since before I was a teenager. I'm 57 now. Um, biggest salmon I've ever netted, 42 pounds. So I throw all this out there just to illustrate that I've been around king salmon. I know how to catch king salmon. And I can help you catch more and bigger king salmon just about anywhere you want to fish for them. But today we're going to talk about landlocked kings. Resume on landlocked kings, a uh, big king out of Folsom. 31 inches. Big King out of uh, Don Pedro Reservoir, 9.5 pounds. Big King out of Shasta, over six. Big King out of Elmanor, over seven. Enough said, know how to catch him. I'm gonna help you catch more and bigger kings right now. I'm only gonna show you three presentations, okay? These don't have to be your presentations, but let's start at the broad view. Let's talk about King Salmon. Don't care if they're living in Shasta or the Pacific Ocean. Here's the deal. And I'm going to contrast them with, say, brown trout. 
okay? If you wanna catch a really, really big brown trout in a lake, okay, one of the ways of doing that is to upsize your lures. As brown trout get bigger, the forage they chase gets larger, okay? A 10 pound brown will eat a 14 inch rainbow trout, okay? King salmon are not brown trout, okay? They have a different lifestyle, all right? They are predominantly school fish, or, or at least in loose net schools, the salmon are, the kings are, and they feed on small organisms, usually shrimp or bait fish in the ocean of some sort. In lakes, um, here in Northern California, they predominantly feed on threadfin shad and pond smelt. Sometimes they feed on immature panfish, which school in open water, just like ocean kings will sometimes feed on immature rockfish, which also school in open water, okay? So if you're in the ocean and you're fishing for, for salmon off the California coast, and the fish are eating anchovies, the salmon, whether they're 35 pounds or five pounds, are all eating the same thing. So upsizing your bait, running larger baits, things like that, that's not really gonna help you achieve your big fish goals. Here's what you need to catch a big salmon. A, you need big salmon in, 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 in the body of water you're fishing or in the vicinity of your boat, whether you're in the ocean or you're on Folsom Lake or elsewhere, okay? So you need big salmon around. Beyond that, you need to hook a maximum amount of salmon because the small salmon and the big salmon are all feeding on the same thing, okay? The nice thing about salmon is, is they have a very short lifespan, all right? Four years, about four years max. That means they are biters. They have to feed. Do you know why rainbow trout are easier to catch than brown trout? Because rainbow trout have a shorter lifespan. They spend more days out of the year feeding than brown trout do, which have a much longer lifespan. Kings, like tuna, have a short lifespan and they eat. They are voracious predators, okay? So that means if they're voracious predators, that usually means you can cut your lure selection down. Now there's a broad range of lures that kings will hit that, you know, kings that are landlocked, kings that live in lakes. There's a broad range of lures that they will hit, but what bodes best for you is cutting your lure selection down to two, three, or four basic presentations and then using your electronics and being out on the water and letting the salmon teach you what's going on at any given time and kind of globally how they respond to different situations. Now, there are a lot of guys catching kings at Folsom this, this winter, um, and I was certainly one of them. I was fishing on par with most folks out there, but my salmon, just the salmon I was catching, I was targeting salmon that were moving out of deeper water to feed around a fairly shallow water structure, anywhere from, you know, I think my deepest fish out there was 47, my shallowest was about 17. I was targeting these fish that were moving out of deeper water to hunt around structure. Um, I wasn't concerned about sea and bait. I wasn't that concerned with marking a big mass of fish. I would check out the structure early in the day. There would be no marks on it. I would come back during the afternoon. I would start seeing hard marks. And from experience, I knew that those were kings that were moving up to feed in shallower water. For me, I've always done better on kings fishing the top of the biomass. If they're deep and I'm seeing all the marks at 100, a lot of times I'm catching my fish at 60, 70 feet because the fish that are most active, the fish that are most likely to be feeding, tend to elevate in the water column. And for kings, they tend to move on to structure. Kings love structure, whether they're in the ocean or they're in a lake. So keep that in mind. So cut down your lure selection um, and, and really rely on experience on the water. Start fishing for kings, start targeting kings, start taking notes on what you see, what they do, how they respond to different things. How do they respond at your lake to the full moon? Things like that. The best teacher are teachers are the salmon in the body of water that you call your home lake. All salmon are, are similar, 
but each, each lake has, you know, some little unique properties. Let me take you through my top three offerings at Folsom Lake. Um, and again, I think you should, you know, cut your repertoire down and uh, I'll talk about each of these in a general way. I would never go salmon trolling without some of these on the boat. These are green label anchovies. They're tray bait anchovies. The ones in the bag, there's some good baits in there and you can use those for tipping and things like that. Just spring for some tray bait. Get three or four trays of these and uh, you'll notice it says medium size. You want the mediums, you don't want the big giant ones um, because what you're really trying to mimic with this, if you're out at Folsom Lake, you're trying to mimic a pond smelt. Now the pond smelt are a little bit smaller than these right now, but the salmon will still hit them. We've got a little snow coming down here, but the salmon will still hit them. So number one bait for me is some sort of rig bait, usually a medium sized anchovy, sometimes shad. Um, I just put up a, a video on how to rig bait fish. That will serve you well. By all means, if you're into running the bait heads, run them. Um, for me, I'm looking for a natural presentation and I've never seen a pond smelt or an anchovy wearing a motorcycle helmet, which to me is what a bait head looks like. So let's learn how to tie the leader, go natural. You're gonna catch fish on this. Also, you can cut these up, use them for tipping your other lures. Kings love meat. I always like to tip. Unless I'm running spoons, I am always tipping. So that's number one presentation, rigged anchovies. They're also versatile. You can run whole anchovies or you can plug cut them and just run the tail section. I caught several kings this year out there at Folsom, plug cutting anchovies and running them behind a six inch dodger on a short leader. So that works. Medium sized tray bait anchovies. Treat them nice, keep them perfect and uh, they will treat you well out on the water. Now. My number two bread and butter presentation, I just took these off my rods. This is what I was fishing at Folsom. So let me grab this one. Chrome and blue Dodger, about a nine inch leader and a white shad tube, tying this on a double hook rig, tipping one of the hooks with meat. I prefer mackerel for my tipping meat, but you can certainly use strips of anchovy. Um, strip your meat up before you go fishing. Put some sea salt in with it. Don't use iodinized, it'll turn your bait black. Put some sea salt on it and uh, you are good to go. Just a little sliver of meat. Kings love meat. I was also putting some Procure on here. Um, I was running with the Bloody Tuna. Um, I have success on garlic and different scents. Tend to, tend to like more robust scents when I'm chasing kings. Not so much the sweet stuff, the garlic, the Bloody Tuna, stuff like that. Six inch blade, basically a white hoochie, a white shad tube. My other go-to was a watermelon blade right here with a blue and silver hoochie on it. Um, some days this worked well, some days it didn't work very well at all, um, but very consistent on the white tube. So those were my two basic presentations. The bait as well as the blades, 1.8 to 2.2. Those were my number one and number two presentations. My number three presentation, is always some sort of spoon. A lot of guys like to use speedy shiners. That is an absolutely phenomenal lure. I prefer to use my speed spoons, um, copper, chrome, gold. Um, you can go with painted colors too. Whatever you feel confidence in. But if the kings are fired up, the kings are chasing, you know, troll spoons anywhere from two and a half to three and a half miles an hour. And uh, if they're chasing bait, you're gonna be yelling fish on. Super simple, you don't have to deal with tipping. Um, you don't have to worry about staying in a very narrow speed range. But that's it for me. Those are the three classes of lures that I run for kinks. Now, some guys, they're going to, you know, maybe get rid of the, the rig bait and they're going to run the Brad's rotating baits. Nothing wrong with that. I know guys that swear by Tasmanian devils for kinks. I know other guys that pull flies tipped with meat for kinks. The bottom line is cut your repertoire down and really focus on presentation. Watch the fish, understand what the fish are doing, understand when the fish are feeding, understand when the fish aren't feeding. Kings will tell you everything you need to know because they typically are biters. They're gonna feed and they're gonna feed voraciously at some point during the day. They can move around, generally speaking, at any reservoir, the main body is a good place to start and then start deciphering it from there. Use some patience early on. 
success builds success when it comes to catching king salmon. Final thought about lure selection. I want you to think about a commercial salmon boat on the ocean. What do they run? Do they have a million different lures? No, they're running really heavy line, they're running rig bait, they're running hoochies, and they're either running spoons or possibly apex lures, depending on the skipper. That's it. They're fishing for a living. They're putting clothes on their kids' backs. They're paying their mortgage by catching salmon. And that's all they run because they know those salmon are biters. They're feeding on bait fish. And if you're at the right place at the right time, they're pretty darn easy to catch. And last but not least, remember, the difference between catching a small salmon and a big salmon is having big salmon in the vicinity. They all feed on the same forage and they're all biters. If there's 10 pound salmon in a lake and the fish are biting, you got a good chance of hooking a 10 pound king salmon if you're hooking smaller salmon. That's all I got to say for now. I'm gonna show you more tips and, and tricks, you know, pertaining to catching landlocked kings because I know those give a lot of people fits. It's a little different than trout fishing, but not much. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple, guys. Catch as many fish as you can, and some of those are going to be big, beautiful fish, or at least the biggest fish that the body of water you're fishing has to, has to offer. I'm Kel Kellogg. If you're looking for any kind of gear, trout gear, salmon gear, whatever, get on up to uh, FHSFishing.com. You can also book a trip with me up there. Check out my guide calendar. I will be back on Folsom Chasing Kings uh, later on this spring in the month of June. Um, but for the time being, the guide boat is going to be at Collins Lake. If you'd like to learn to catch trout hands-on out on the FHS pontoon boat, check out that guide and calendar. I'm booking up fast, but I still have some spots available. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great week, and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube.